In a truly bizarre decision here, Sweden has decided to build 10 nuclear power plants. This comes at a time when the cost of solar has just fallen this year by 30 to 40 percent. And its efficiency has also improved, meaning it's increased deployment this year by 50 percent worldwide and it's speeding up pace. Sweden saying, well, not so interested in solar. We think nuclear is the answer. The interesting thing is fossil fuel energy companies, most of them worldwide have said nuclear is a no-go. It's too expensive. It's too slow. We're not even going to consider it. The age of nuclear is over. Sweden is saying, hold my beer. We want 10 of them. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. I'm kind of surprised I just said that, but it's true. I mean, 10 nuclear power plants for Sweden. Is that really necessary for a quite a small country that already has quite a bit of energy, renewable energy as well. Very strange considering the renewable energy deployment rollout across Europe. Many countries in Europe now are just building solar like crazy, battery projects like crazy, and it's really paying off for them. Sweden, on the other hand, well, they're going in a different direction. And to give you some context here on country sizes, Sweden has a population of 10.4 million. Finland has a population of 5.5 million and Norway has a population of 5.4 million. So Sweden has about twice as many people as Norway. Yes, it's also a bigger country than Norway, but Sweden is clearly the most committed European country now towards a nuclear. In fact, they're the only committed European country. They're being criticized pretty heavily for their plan to build 10 nuclear reactors, which will take a long time. It's always much slower to build nuclear reactors. There's never been a nuclear reactor that I'm aware of that's been built on time. I'm not aware of it. If you know of one, let me know in the comments because I haven't heard of it. Anyway, environmental experts say proposals from Swedish nuclear manufacturers are too expensive and will come too late to meet Sweden's energy needs. Now, if Sweden is doing this because they need this energy next year or the year after, well, yeah, obviously that's just idiocy because that's not happening. It's going to take many years to build the nuclear reactors. Anyway, environmental experts are criticizing the Swedish government's plan to build at least 10 nuclear reactors in the next 20 years. Now, I kind of get where people are coming from because think about it. Solar's just come down in price 30 to 40% this year, the panel prices. Battery prices are down the lowest they've been in history. Energy density is just on the verge of increasing. In fact, it just has because they're now adding manganese to lithium-ion phosphate cells, which are the cheapest cells and they're used for energy storage. We've got many types of energy storage now. In fact, there's iron flow batteries. There's different types of affordable storage. But Sweden is saying, no, 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 we're not really sold on that. We want to build all these nuclear power plants, 10 minimum, possibly more. But the thing is, Nuclear is not getting any cheaper to build. Solar, wind, and batteries continue to get cheaper. So by the time they say, they're saying over 20 years, by the time they build the last one of these, or the last few of them in say 15 years from now, just imagine how cheap it will be to deploy renewable energy. It just won't be cost competitive. Anyway, the climate minister Romina Poor Motari announced on Wednesday that in order to meet its climate goals, Sweden needed to double electricity production in the next two decades. The reason, to, the way to do that, they think is nuclear. The plan for 10 nuclear reactors or potentially more would mark a dramatic change from the country's current capacity for nuclear power with six reactors in operation, accounting for about 30% of its electricity production. Lars J. Nielsen, a professor at Lund University and a member of the European Climate Advisory Board, said he disputed the government's claim that the new reactors were needed and dismissed the move as symbolic. You cannot certainly say that we need 10 new nuclear reactors. Right now, the expansion of electricity production in Sweden is through wind power, he told The Guardian. I don't expect any new nuclear power in Sweden unless the government provides quite far-reaching guarantees similar to what you have at Hinkley Point in the UK. Now, this move was more about posturing than action, say some experts, claiming the government wants to show it's taking action on meeting its climate change goals. And he said, well, the professor said, I see it more as symbolic than actually creating any real change. 
If the reactors were built, the costs were likely to fall heavily on the Swedish taxpayer, said Nielsen. Having been a hotly debated issue in the past, this latest announcement has had a lukewarm response. The government thought that the population would say, yeah, woohoo, great. And people are just going, oh, yeah, right. That's confusing. I think people ultimately are just confused about this. Sweden's reputation as a green leader on the global stage is shifting, he said. Sweden will partly lose that profile. Now the momentum and progressiveness is coming from the EU and Brussels. The EU's fit for 55 plan legally requires member states to reduce emissions by at least 55% by 2030 and become climate neutral by 2050. Sweden's moderates agreed when they formed a coalition government with the Christian Democrats, liberals, and the far-right Sweden Democrats that more reactors would be permitted and that investments in nuclear power would be made profitable through credit guarantees and changes to pricing. Now, I just want to mention here, just as a little sub to this video, I don't support the terminology of far left and far right. I think they're just sort of terms made up by people who don't like those political parties. So I'm just sharing this with you because this is what the media is saying. I'm not saying that I agree with those terms. Anyway, this week was the first time the government had been given an anticipated number of new reactors, the number they say that they'll build. Since day one, the government has worked with full force to remove the obstacles erected to prevent nuclear power, said Pumitari, a liberal who, when she assumed the post last year, became the country's youngest ever minister. The climate transition requires a doubling of electricity production in the next 20 years, and nuclear power plays a decisive role for us to succeed in this. Now, intriguingly, no one really seems to agree with this. In fact, there isn't any countries in the world right now that agree with Sweden's position. i basically been following the energy market very closely, and yes, China is building a few nuclear reactors, but based on its percentage of population, its energy needs, it's minuscule in comparison to what Sweden plans to do. It's really, China is focusing most heavily on solar. In fact, they've grown their solar at an incredible rate. They've increased their solar deployment over the past five years, more than the rest of the world combined. Every single year they do that. So there's really no country in the world that's embracing nuclear in the way that Sweden is. And there's no country in the world that thinks it's even necessary. That's what's really weird about this. Karen Lexen, the Secretary General of Sweden's biggest environmental organization, accused the government of attempting to divert focus on climate issues. They're diverting focus from what is really needed currently, which is to produce enough electricity by 2030. The plan also ignored the progress being made on new methods of storing energy and other developments, she said. We don't agree with the energy minister when she said in order to build more wind power, we need more nuclear. We think it's a bit old fashioned. To be honest, unfortunately, it seems as though the politicians, almost all of them in Sweden, they don't appear to actually have any numbers and statistics and data to support their arguments. Now, it would be pretty easy to crush this idea that it's a good idea to build 10 or more nuclear power plants in Sweden simply through mathematics. You can simply do the numbers to prove that it's not economically feasible in comparison to the alternative wind, solar, and batteries. But it doesn't seem as though um, any of these politicians um, or even these experts from climate groups have that information, which is actually not that hard to get. So my suggestion is rather than sort of lobbying in the media with these kind of overarching, sort of more emotive statements, prevent the data, do what Rethink X does, prevent the actual hard data, showing the alternatives and how they work, show how they work in Spain, show how they work in Germany, show how they work in many countries. What about the United Kingdom? Show how the alternatives are a much better option when it comes to the financial costs involved. Remember, the average cost of a nuclear power plant is 50% more than the initial proposed price. That's pretty much across the board. I've never ever heard of a nuclear power plant being built at the proposed, the initial cost. You know, a company says it'll cost us, say, four billion to build it. It always costs more. Every single time it blows out. And the other problem with having 10 or more nuclear power plants is no one wants to live near them. They always want to live a long way away. You can understand why. And so then you're basically 
taking up a huge amount of land around the power plant. It's not just the power plant itself. Now, Elon Musk actually gives some really good numbers on this, and he compares just putting solar panels on the ground in the actual land space taken up by a nuclear power plant, and actually the solar panels end up being more efficient. The reason for that, of course, is what I just said then, that people move away when you build a nuclear power plant. If you fill up that space where they move away from with solar, yeah, you're going to get more energy from the solar panels, which is crazy because it's so much easier and cheaper to deploy the solar instead. Let me know your thoughts, though, in the comments. Thank you for watching.